Yeah, th thanks very much. Thanks. Um, really appreciate the invitation to talk to you all around the world this evening. Uh, tougher acts to follow from Ada and Neil, but uh, I'll, I'll do my best. Now, um, Alison, feel free to cut me off. I'm actually going to present this a little differently than I'd planned. <laughs> so if I go over, just, just cut me out. No problem. Now, my name's uh, Elder Alison said, Damien. I'm the CEO of Biotelligia, a uh, biological crop protection technology company based where I am right now here in Auckland, New Zealand. It's 9.06 uh, p.m. in the evening here. This evening, I'm going to give you a kind of a speed tour through just a couple of the technologies that we're developing here that are based, you know, I guess, most relevant for army worm, certainly involved in, in insect control. Although, to tell you right up front, we haven't yet done much or any work on fall army worm directly. It's something that we're, we're certainly interested in. Now, you know, just a little bit of background about the company and, and what we're trying to do. You know, essentially, we're attempting to develop biological crop protection technology that can really work in the way that growers might at the moment use synthetic chemistry. And I guess, you know, Arda pointed out some of the kind of problems or deficiencies existing in, in biologicals as they have been to date. And I think we, we see the, the issues with biologicals that need solving is principally being around <clears throat> efficacy, certainly high level efficacy is desirable, but even, even more than that, I think consistency is really important. So a lot of existing biologicals, certainly kind of traditional biocontrol technologies will work quite well one day, moderately the next and not at all the next, and growers really need more consistency than that uh, going forward and kind of next generation uh, biologicals. Obviously, cost effectiveness is another thing that has plagued um, biologicals in their introduction and to wide-scale use uh, in agriculture. So we in this company, we're, we're a company of biologists, really. And to try and solve those issues, we, we really come at it from understanding the biology of the systems we worked at. And as Alison said, we're pretty well, all of us, especially me, but really uh, fungus lovers here and the way that plants and fungi interact. Uh, and we mine those interactions to identify and develop technologies. And principally, that means for certainly by pesticide development, which is the main part of what I'm about to talk to you about. It means understanding what the biomolecules are that are involved in complex biological extracts uh, that are responsible for efficacy, such that we can QC products that they always have the same amount of those biomolecules so that they will be highly efficacious, particularly, as I mentioned, consistent in their activity. Um, the technologies we're developing in biopesticides are process neutral, um, as Neil pointed out, it's really important that growers can use things in a way that's easy and that they're used to doing. So take out chemistry, put in biologicals in this case. Uh, shelf life stable and stability is another uh, general issue for biologicals. And as I mentioned, obviously, technologies need to be cost effective. So this is kind of broadly speaking the four technology areas or the active substance areas that we're developing at Biotelligia uh, in our pipeline. And three out of these four are biomolecule-based biopesticides, so sprayable biopesticides to use. And we won't have time this evening to talk about the phytotoxics that we're developing uh, as bioherbicides. Um, neither do we have very much time to talk about our biofungicide kind of flagship technology, which is quite close uh, to market. But I would just point out, given the focus on uh, Southeast Asia on the call this evening, that one of the principal uh, diseases that our biofungicide in development is active against is rice blast. This is from a field trial in the Philippines. And you can see that application of the code name SF7.9 by fungicide is very effective at controlling blast. So if anyone's interested, maybe whether it's in the chat or in a follow-up email, we'd be happy to talk about that technology further. But what I am going to talk to you more about this evening uh, is principally MZ7000, code for uh, by insecticide in development, um, pre-commercial we expect registration here in New Zealand next year. And I'm going to talk to you about what we call endogen our platform area for identifying fungal endophytes, so fungi that live within plants for the life of the plant, delivering a given bioprotection trait all the way through from planting through uh, to harvest. So I'll start with showing you one of my favorite um, pictures. So this is the biological system that we mine for uh, our bioinsecticide technology. Now, 
this is very familiar to people in New Zealand. I see there are a few people from from here on the call this evening, maybe less so in some other parts of the world. This is a grass field, as you can see. It's a forage cool season grass. It's called perennial rye grass. It's one of the principal forage grasses grown here in New Zealand uh, for animal forage. And this field here on the left is exactly the same planted grass as this one on the right. Neither of these fields have been treated any differently. They're not irrigated differently. No pesticides have been applied. But this grass on the right has been completely eaten uh, by insect pests. This one on the left hasn't. It was exactly the same grass, exactly the same cultivar of grass. The difference between these fields is that this field on the left has been infected with a fungal endophyte, endo inside plant, uh, fight plant. Fungi that living within all of the tissues of this grass plant, as you can see here in blue, hyper in a, a longitudinal section of a, of a leaf. And each of these green dots is a GFP genetically uh, labeled hypha inside a cross section through a grass tiller. So you can see that this field here is very widely uh, infected with a fungus. And the reason the presence of this fungus leads to really extraordinary insect control, and you, you can see the black and white difference between these uh, fields, is the production of biomolecules. Uh, and in this case, another field showing something very similar, in this case, a meadow fescue plant. It's been infected with this endophytic fungus called Epichloe, in this case, Epichloe ansonata. It's infecting these grasses and it's producing these molecules called lolines. It's a prolizidine with this kind of funky oxygen ring and various decorated uh, amine. And it's the production of these biomolecules that are very insecticidal uh, that lead to this really significant biocontrol impact. I think it's probably the most significant biocontrol naturally occurring, depending on if you count BT, which I'm not for the purposes of this evening. Obviously, the impact in this setting is really substantial, but it's very low value as a plant. And the technology we wished to develop was to utilize this really high level naturally occurring insecticidal um, phenomenon to develop a biopesticide spray utilizing these molecules in the system to spray on food crops. And indeed, that's what we've done. And I'll, I'll tell you more about that in the next five minutes or so. So the path to doing that is we've developed a, a system of taking the fungus that naturally and obligately lives within this grass plant and protects it naturally. We take the fungus out and we're able to grow that accidentally uh, using various tricks. And further to that, using even more tricks uh, and bioreactors, we're able to induce it to produce these molecules uh, in large scale reactors. And that's a very short version of a very long story, which leads to our development of this biopesticide spray. Actually, the product will be called Endofight, Endofight. Now, the features, as I've mentioned, this is it will be a, a contact or is a contact foliar insecticide product. Uh, it, the active substance is a fermentation extract of this fungus Epicolianthinata, a proprietary strain of that. And we QC, as I said earlier on, the product such that it contains known amounts of these marker compounds, lolines, and there's a mixture of these, which is essentially what leads to the insecticidal activity. This product uh, is very active against, and I'll show you some um, quantified uh, data in the next few slides, against a range of insect pests. We've mostly focused on sucking insects, particularly aphids, thrips, and white fly. Our first label will be from mealybug. Uh, in wine and grapes, but a range of others as well. Some evidence for fall armyworm, although we haven't explored that uh, ourselves just yet. We'll be targeting a range of segments, including high volume row crop segments, which is reasonably unusual uh, for a biological. The reason that we are able to do that is because over the last couple of years, we've been actually really successful in genetically engineering very fast growing reactor tractable organisms. Like a, like a brewing organism uh, to heterologously express the genes for this molecule's production. So we take the genes from the naturally occurring endophytic fungus, we engineer those into bioreactor tractable uh, organisms, which enable us to produce very low cost fermentation systems. We're not quite there yet, but we're most of the way, uh, which is pretty exciting for us. We have a stable liquid formulation. Importantly, Obviously, in this industry, there are no toxicological endpoints of concern, either for us uh, or for honeybees and, and other beneficial insects that we've trialed uh, either. And I think a really important point about biologicals in terms of benefits compared to synthetic chemistry is that this product is readily biodegradable, will go away um, in the environment. 
That's particularly important if there are unforeseen circumstances, as there have been, as we know, uh, with a range of chemical products. Uh, and useful for use all the way through to harvest. The New Zealand regulators indicate there will be no issues with residues or with the holding period, and we expect that to be the case uh, everywhere else in the world also. Now, just to uh, quantify some of that activity, I, I think probably the audience is principally interested in, in what, what it works on and how well. Uh, NZ7000 is lowlands containing extract of epicloyance and other fermentation have insecticidal activity demonstrated by us or previously in the literature uh, against a range of things. I mentioned mostly we focused on sucking insects, an example of that's shown here in our laboratory, uh, using the product on green pea chafed on bok choy, actually. Uh, this is the control, this is the percentage of either mortality or incapacitation over 24, 48 and 72 hours. The light bars are essentially stopping the feeding, the dark bars are mortality, and you can see that over that three-day period, pretty much complete control uh, of green pea chafers in the system, very much analogous to the comparator, which is one of the leading chemistries, obviously, in, in imidacloprid, clearly being removed from various markets at the moment. Uh, Dome bat moth is something that we've shown efficacy for recently, so we, we do think that there's some likelihood of lepidopterin uh, control. Now, there are multiple modes of action, um, as well as being insecticidal, this, this product has repellent activity. I'm going to race through this. Um, you can see the effect here on a different aphid species, in this case on uh, barley. And given the choice, uh, aphids will very rapidly migrate from plants that have been sprayed with NZ7000 onto plants that have been sprayed with water. That activity goes out well past eight days, past two weeks. We're not yet sure quite how long it lasts. This has been noted for other things by us and in the literature as well, including some years ago now um, by Riedel and their colleagues in full army win. And obviously we've performed a range of field trials. This is an example of a regulatory trial in uh, wine grapes with muley bug control uh, and 14 days post application or at harvest time some three weeks later. Compared to incidents on the untreated control, we get very significant reduction at the field rate and half the field rate. Uh, and this is comparing to spirotetramat. A range of other, you can read them for yourself here, uh, insects controlled on a range of other uh, plant species. This has been trialled by us and a range of partners around the world. We're really confident in the very highly belief to see this product. It's not magical and there are a few things we've trialled it against in which it, it, it doesn't work, but it is a very broad spectrum, highly potent, very consistent biological insecticide. And we're really very excited to bring it to market uh, relatively soon. We expect our first registration here in New Zealand in 2023 next year. We've just about completed the final uh, tick off on the New Zealand EPA dossier. And we will be looking to register around the world after that. We're talking to the US EPA right now. So I want to move quickly a little, spend a little bit less time, just come, come back to this idea of endophytes. So just to remind you, this is coming back to the biological system that we've developed in 7,000 as a biopesticide spray from, but we kind of stepped back and thought, well, no one ever needs to spray this particular plant. And what, what about, it's got this endophyte living within it that's protecting it from within all the way through the life of the crop. What if we could utilize this kind of system for crop protection in wheat or in corn or in, in rice and eating the other crop. And that's a, a platform we've developed that we are calling Endogen as a way to deliver by control traits uh, into modern crops using these endophytic fungi, fungi that live within the plants. So the very short um, version of a, oops, is it gonna come up? Yep. Of a pretty long story now is, you know, we, we had a big idea and we, we went out and tested it. And the, I, I think the critical thing to understand to the background that we come at this from is that it seems pretty clear, and I think it is clear, that modern crops don't really have any selection pressure to cultivate or adapt to symbionts with microbes that are beneficial. So modern crops essentially lost this um, many of the bioprotective endophytes. They still have many microbes living within them, but there's not been that pressure to maintain bioprotective relationships during domestication, certainly over the last hundred years, but much longer than that too. If you compare a modern crop, which is covered in pesticides and has helped with fertilizer and irrigation compared to where these wild ancestral plants of these grow, you can see that there's a lot more pressure 
to uh, work with microbes and li living within them um, to, to have these bioprotective relationships. So we went out and we have indeed gone to the parts of the world where, where these ancestral crops uh, are from. And we've brought back from their material back to New Zealand, from the ancestral plants to modern crops. We've isolated thousands of endophytes, endophytic fungi from within those um, plants. We've then asked the question, can we deliver those endophytes, which have come from ancestral plants, in first into modern crop species? I'm, gonna, I'm using wheat in the next few slides as an example for that, but we also do this with corn. Do those endophytes, are they able to infect modern crop derivatives, like modern wheat plants? Two Further, minutes, do they Damien. persist within, thank you, within that wheat plant for the life of the crop all the way through to harvest? And once we understand that, we then ask the question of those endophytes, do they have any biocontrol traits? And we'd expect that they would, um, given a close relationship such as that. So this kind of shows an example of taking one of those ancestral endophytes, a wild endophyte, if you like, applying it to a modern plant, in this case wheat, uh, and then determining whether those plants all the way through to maturity maintain a systemic fungal infection. And the answer, and many more than I wildly dreamed is yes. So we have a very large number of endophytes in our collection that have come from wild ancestral species that we can systemically, persistently inoculate onto a seed that will live within modern wheat plant for the life of the wheat. And this is also true of corn. This is the last slide. We've been just now in the past year, so this is certainly pre-field work. This is all work in the lab. In the next year, we will be taking some of these out into the field for development. We've started to then ask the question, we've got a really large number now of endophytes in our collection that we can infect into modern crops and will persist within them. What are the biocontrol traits that might be present? And we've looked at, this is an, an example with Rhizoctonia, um, a big um, establishment disease issue uh, in a range of plants. And this is just showing you the effect that one of the endophytes here is it's basically complete control uh, of Rhizoctonia disease and a population of wheat plants shown graphically here, but you don't really need to see the graph. And we have a range of bioprotective disease controlling endophytes that, um, of wheat. We've tested in vitro a range of other of these and Fusarium pythium in a range of others in fact as well. And there's a lot of bioactivity. We've just now started to move into insects and developed an aphid repellent screen. And believe it or not, the very first endophyte we put through that screen showed really quite significant repellents uh, for green peach aphids. So we're really excited to develop new uh, insect screens as well. And to remind you, this is the main thing that we see in terms of bioprotection from our exemplar endophyte in, in the grass system. So we really are keen to explore insect resistance quite a lot more. And as anyone that's familiar with this area probably aware, we also see a, a, a very large number of biostimulant, in our case, water deficit silicon heat stress uh, protection from the endophyte collection. So we're excited to take this to the next stage now. We'd be very interested in looking at Paul Army Worm uh, if there are any partners out there that are skilled uh, in doing so. We anticipate taking our first products. We've got lots of validated candidates now from whole plants into market around 2026. So just how this might pertain to Fall Army Worm, ASEAN. Um, as I've mentioned, we've developed the NZ7000 bioinsecticide based on our endophyte produced um, metabolite principally. Uh, it works really well. It, we don't yet know around uh, Spidoptera. As I mentioned, we're very happy to partner if, if there are interested parties at looking at this. I've just mentioned we've got a large number of endophytes that was focused on wheat. We also have a large number in maize. We've really focused on disease control, but as I mentioned, we will be moving into insect control screening very, very soon. And I can see that that's, this could be really disruptive in terms of the way that this technology could be applied in, in the general IPM program uh, going forward. As I've mentioned a number of times now, we'd be really delighted to explore uh, any partnership potential uh, in the Southeast Asian region. And I'll just close with some, maybe many of you probably unaware that um, Fall Army Worm has recently been found in a large number of places here in New Zealand. It's not been uh, found previously. Um, so broadly found now in the North Island and we're nervously waiting for colder days through the winter, hoping that uh, there'll be no populations survive. But unfortunately, we are having rather a warm winter. So some concern we may have for army problems uh, in New Zealand coming in the spring.
Thank you very much in indeed. It's really Thanks. nice to talk to you and happy to take some questions. Thanks, Damien. Uh, that's excellent. I'm just going to tell everyone we're going to be five minutes late uh, ending just because I want to, to keep five minutes to ask some questions to Damien. Uh, and then I'll wrap up very quickly. Um, but fantastic presentation, really interesting. It's sort of almost like unlocking the power of endophytes. So um, nice to nice to have that sort of to look forward to because it looks like such a um, exciting and and um, really transformative area uh, of research um, for plant uh, protection uh, and health. Um, so thanks, Damien. A, a couple of questions here, um, and we've got one right here. Does Do the endophytes increase the immunity of the plant to fight the pest or the endophytes directly fight the pest uh, or both? Uh, and another question is, do they kill them through a toxin or do they repel them? Yeah. A combination. So, you know, we, we haven't got to grips with mode of action for a lot of the things we're doing. We've worked through really large numbers of screens and we've validated those. We're just moving into a point now where we're understanding how things work. I can say it, it, it definitely is both. So there are a range of ways in which these organisms can work, you know, niche occupation, antagonism, competition, and biomolecule production. I can say that there is quite a lot of biomolecule production and direct uh, activity that way, but we also anticipate there'll be quite an impact on the plant and stimulating the, the plant effect that, that's yet to be explored, but we know it'll be all of those, those things. I'm sorry, I missed the second part of the question, Alison. Uh, the next question was, do they repel them or do they, um, and I'm just going to go into the uh, In our experience, we, we, we're just starting with uh, insect repellents, screens, and our endophyte collection in wheat and in corn. Yep. And we're seeing re repellents rather than insecticidal activity. Huh, in the grass system that we use as the exemplar, it's definitely insecticidal, as, as you've seen from the biomolecule that we've yep. developed as a, a biopesticide. Excellent. And I've got a comment here from Carol that I'm just going to read out as well. So one of their most recent projects was isolation, characterization, and identification of endophytes in the roots and leaves of banana plants sampled from all mm -hmm. the different agro e ecological zones in Cameroon and Gabon. We mm -hmm. identified different strains of Fusarium, Trichoderma, and Bovaria. Not only did they boost the plant growth, but also some of the Fusarium and Bovaria strains were efficient against banana and plantain. Uh, and corn borers. So thanks for sharing that with us as well. So you've actually, you've um, kicked off a whole lot of discussion, Damien, <laughs> in the chat. So that's yeah, I, know. I might just make a comment about that. That's fantastic. I'd really like to chat to you about that, um, Carol. I, I think what would be really cool is to go into the native range of banana plants and isolate endophytes from there because those those crops are absolutely soaked in pesticide. So um, finding bioactive things there is yeah, a really, yeah, really good start. Really interesting. No, no, if, if, excellent. So I hope you two do make contact together and, and I can always pass on emails as well, everyone. Um, we've got a question here, fascinating pre presentation. Thanks for sharing from Jan. And can you share a bit about the rice blast work relevant for the ASEAN region? Does this also involve bioprotective endophytes? Sure, so um, no, so this is a, again an endophyte derived um, metabolite. So this is a biopesticide uh, developed by Biotelgen. So it's based on a, a, essentially a, a fungus that's usually an endophyte of a range of plants, but it's similar to the NZ7000 story. So it's a sprayable contact by a fungicide QC'd for the presence of the uh, fungicidal bioactive molecule. Uh, it's membrane active uh, fungicide and yeah, really works very well uh, on rice blast. Also, Asian soybean rust. I understand that's becoming less of an issue uh, in Brazil, but yeah, we would certainly be keen to talk more about that. It's not involving a, a biological um, material in this instance. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm just going to share my screen while I'm um, multitasking here. So I may need a bit of help with everyone. Can people see my? full screen now or my notes 
Damien, can you see my full screen or my uh, or the notes? Uh, so? I see your notes. This is a little thing going oh, around. No. So, so there we go. So Damien, just just before I go, sorry for that. I just wanted to uh, multitask. Not very good at that at the moment. But there but you go. um, <laughs> <laughs> Damien, that was really really interesting. Again, um, looking forward to coming back to you in a year's time and seeing your progress. And I think that's a good follow up for us. I, I could have had a. I think we all could have had a, just one webinar just on each of these uh, examples. To be honest, because so informative and so much to discuss. Um, your your point about working um, with people in this region uh, is uh, gratefully received and, and we'll definitely be reaching out and I'm sure there's a lot of interest. Uh, and we'll also be soon launching the co-design of a big bioprotection centre for Southeast Asia. And that's exactly the type of collaboration that we want to be doing with um, innovators and entrepreneurs, bio-entrepreneurs, uh, such as uh, all of you today that presented. So thank you so much. And I'm just going to make a very quick summary. So if you can keep with us, I, I know some people had to leave on the half hour, but I would just like to say it has been a fantastic session. Uh, Cabby, speaking on behalf of Cabby and ASEAN Fall Army Women Action Plan and CSIRO, we're very pleased to be hosting this session. It was great to hear from Damien around harnessing the biology of plant fungal interactions and how they can contribute to that clean, effective, safe crop protection for the future. Ada, uh, taking the inspiration from plants uh, to design encapsulate biopesticide technology that drives greater performance and efficacy for bioprotection. Fantastic. Neil um, really showed us a new category of chemical-free sustainable bioprotection through these self-limiting insect technologies. And Neil, just a big shout out there around the importance of communicating these sorts of technologies when you introduce them to farmers and users in the environment. I, I really liked uh, your focus there. It's a really important part of technology transfer that's often forgotten. So a big shout out there for that. I'd like to uh, thank also all the participants today that joined us. Um, we've had a lot join us, over 160 across the whole session, which is fantastic. And there's always a lot of people that watch the video as well. Leandra, thank you for helping out. Um, very, very um, appreciated. Uh, thank you for Roma Gwyn, who also suggested some of the speakers today. So um, very appreciative of that. And uh, to all of you, um, I just want to remind you that we have another session uh, on the 25th of August. Uh, so we invite you to that session. You can register for all our sessions at the ASEAN Fall Army Women Action events page. Uh, and another shout out next week, we'll be starting a, a quite a detailed session on transboundary pests and climate change uh, and diseases in Southeast Asia with a focus on Fall Army Worm next week, uh, which will be very interesting. Uh, we'll also be looking at some risk assessment across the region there, and then we'll be diving into the genomics, um, understanding strategies for management uh, in Southeast Asia with focus on fall armyworm on the Tuesday and the, the following month. So there's lots happening in the ASEAN Fall Army Women Action Plan. Today, we're very, very um, privileged to have three excellent speakers and just wish good luck in your uh, work ahead because um, you've got lots to do. Very exciting, very innovative, uh, and we need people like you focusing on new solutions um, for these emerging uh, and um, current plant pests and diseases that are really impacting our food systems. So thank you all. Thank you for me. Um, please keep safe, everyone, and I'll, I'll see you next time. Thank you.